All right, y'all, welcome back to Come With Arms channel. All right, so today we're doing a little bit different of a gear review today. Normally we're checking out like play carriers or pouches, but today we're checking out a digital night vision system. So this is the One Leaf NV200 LRF. And I gotta say, I have been pretty freaking impressed with this thing. So full transparency, um, One Leaf reached out. They offered to send me this unit for testing and review. And I gotta say, I have been pretty impressed. Now, you know, using analog night vision my whole life, like PVS-14 specifically, even going and, and purchasing my own PVS-14, I have, you know, always kind of thought and heard that, you know, analog night vision is always going to be superior and should only be your only option um, when it comes to any sort of, uh, I guess, combative or offensive capability. But I gotta say, these have kind of changed my perspective on how you can use night vision or specifically how you can use digital night vision effectively. Now, I'm not gonna get into the weeds because I'm still not like totally smart when it comes to the differences, but when it comes to analog versus digital night vision, so analog night vision uses an image intensifier tube. Um, so as far as like, you know, ambient light, it picks up on ambient lights significantly better than digital. And at the same time, it's, you know, an image intensifier. It's not necessarily processing it like, you know, this is basically like a digital camera that intensifies the, the ambient light. Um, so generally speaking, digital will require a little bit more ambient light to be effective, but at the same time, it's still processing the images differently. Um, so you might experience like a delay because again, it does have to go through like a processing chip. Now I'll say with this unit specifically, I haven't really noticed that much of a delay. Um, however, I'm not using this the same as I would be with this, because this is a helmet mounted night vision system. So as I'm sort of looking around and scanning, I need there to be no delay, because if I turn my head and then I'm seeing the image sort of moving after I've already turned my head, it's gonna kind of throw me off a bit. So yeah, that's kind of the differences there. This isn't, this isn't the same intended purpose as this would be used for. Now there are some digital night vision systems that are kind of, you know, helmet mounted. Um, and it is what it is, it works for some people. But again, generally speaking, digital night vision is just going to have a, a few more cons that a lot of people don't really want to be dealing with if they're trying to get effective night vision for whatever purpose they're trying to use it for. Now the potential uses for a night vision system like this um, are pretty extensive. Again, with this one specifically, with the, the LRF model, it's got a laser range finder, so that's a completely different thing. But talking about the, the night vision itself, Again, it's binocular, so it's not necessarily going to be kind of as offensive as it would be something helmet mounted that you're using in combination with like, you know, firearms or what have you. This is going to be more for sort of observation or scanning. So it could be offensive, you know, if you're talking about like kind of like a hunting sense or just general like reconnaissance or kind of surveillance. Um, but it's, it's also more of like a, it could be more of like a defense if you're kind of just, you know, in a certain area, you're just trying to see what's around, you're trying to scan. And you know, you have this sort of binocular setup where you know you kind of have a little bit more reactionary time because you're not using this as you know the same sort of intended purpose as a helmet mounted. So you're not gonna be using this the same, which kind of affords you the opportunity and flexibility to use this in a few different scenarios and it works totally fine in that. Now before I talk about the features, I'll talk about kind of what's included or how it actually shows up. So box itself, Pretty simple. Um, it does kind of give you some of the specs. You can kind of see that a little bit. Gives you a lot of the specs on the box itself. Again, kind of on the side, some of the, the features included with this. But so pretty decent box. Not gonna go too in depth with that. Comes with a really solid manual. I gotta say, the manual has a lot of very helpful pictures, which of course, as myself being prior infantry, especially marine infantry, it's nice to have pictures and whatnot. The translations were all pretty freaking spot on. Um, it was very easy to read the manual and yeah, it wasn't like super tedious. So uh, I was able to read the manual within probably like 30 minutes and I pretty much knew everything I needed to know. Comes with a carrying case um, and yeah, it's pretty, pretty simple, but it is a nice little touch. It's nice to get stuff like that. It's nice to get like a neck strap. You have these um, wrist straps, which are pretty helpful, uh, kind of like with old camcorders, they had that. So, it, you know, 
you're not going to be dropping this as much. It doesn't fatigue your, your wrist as much because you can kind of just trap it there and let it hang. Now, I'll be honest. So it does have your standard quarter inch um, thread here. So if you want to mount it onto a tripod or, you know, what have you, you can do that. So I kind of was looking at it and I was like, oh, this is kind of like a, a wrist mount. So I could like attach it to my wrist and then like scan like that um, quickly learned by looking at the manual that wasn't the case so it does come with three rechargeable batteries so there is a usb-c port you can actually remove the batteries but there is also a usb-c port to actually charge the batteries as well but if you do want to run it off of power bank power you can just attach this here and then attach your power bank and then just hook it up and you're good to go which was pretty freaking creative. Um, of course, with night vision, it will drain batteries pretty quickly. With this one, honestly, it was lasting a lot longer than I expected, but it is nice if you're gonna be like out all night, um, you can run a power bank right there, which is you know, pretty, pretty clutch, pretty good thinking on their part. Now, as far as the features themselves, there are a lot. Now, this one did come with the um, 50 millimeter lens. There is also a 35 millimeter lens available. Uh, this just happens to be better for general day and night filming. It does have an f1.2 aperture. So in general, it's got a little bit more light gathering ability than the actual 35 millimeter lens. And I think in the future, they're also going to have a 70 millimeter and 100 millimeter lens available. So to change it out, you just have a little switch here. So you just need to unlock it and then just like that, you can take your lens out and swap it out. Pretty good thinking in general, like future-proofing this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that kind of surprised me as far as like the interchangeable lenses, especially for the price points. I, I haven't mentioned that yet, but you can get this for about 550 US dollars as far as the actual um, LRF model, which is pretty freaking good when it comes to like a night vision system with this many features. And again, we've just sort of scratch the surface as far as the features are concerned. But again, it does have those rechargeable, removable batteries um, to actually access the batteries. It's pretty well thought out as well. So you can just take these wrist straps off. So I'll get this out of the way. And then, so you see here, you have these screw posts. So as opposed to using a screwdriver, so you just unscrew those, pop the cover off, and then you have access to your batteries. So these are actually Samsung batteries. Um, so it's 18650. So as far as milliamp, I'm really not sure. Probably like 1500, 2500 milliamp each, which is pretty freaking solid. Again, you have three. You have one on the other side as well. So there you go. There's your third one. So as far as battery power, like you'll be pretty well set. And again, there's a couple ways to actually keep these things or keep the system going, which is again pretty well thought out and a little bit more enticing for somebody who wants to go on sort of longer duration missions. Now, as far as the actual USB-C port, so you can kind of see that there. It's also got an HDMI port, so if you do want to hook it up to a monitor, whether, again, you're doing some sort of surveillance, if you're working with other people, they can kind of see what you're seeing through this thing, which is, again, just an awesome feature to have. And then it also, this one also came included with a micro SD card, um, pretty decent SD card as well because this is also capable of recording, which I'll kind of talk about that in a little bit. And then it's got um, a headphone jack because this thing also records audio. So yeah, as far as like the features already, we're still kind of scratching the surface. But again, this is capable of actually recording. It can record up to 4K with 120 frames per second. Um, I think the, the recommended, especially if you're gonna be recording specifically at night, is going to be 4K at 30 frames per second. So when you see any sort of footage in this video, that's what I'll be recording with. Any of that night vision footage, I was recording at 4K, 30 frames a second. So as far as the overall recording and just viewing experience, um, it's been pretty impressive. And I gotta say, they put some attention to detail in some of these features which really sort of helps bump it to that next level. And it's been pretty impressive for me, again, with all the other features combined. Um, certain things like they have the Japanese Ohara optical glass that they use in this. So a lot of good clarity when it comes to that. As far as the actual display, again, really not a whole lot of lag. The display itself is very clear. It uses a Sony CMOS sensor, which is your complementary metal oxide semiconductor. So kind of like a little bit nerd stuff. But basically what that allows it to do is take that image, 
process it very quickly because the sensor itself has its own sort of processing power. So it's not sending the image to any firmware or software. So it sort of takes in that image, processes it very quickly, which again leads to very little lag in the actual display in the back. So recording in the day looks great. Recording at night also looks great. It does have its own built-in IR illuminator. And I gotta say, that thing is powerful. So it's an eight watt illuminator. And I gotta say, it is like one of the strongest, especially civilian um, IR illuminators I've had. I mean, like the PBS 14, for example, has its own sort of built-in um, IR illuminator. Really not going to be very useful past, you know, anything that's past like 20 feet, really not gonna be too useful for that. It is nice to have that built-in IR illuminator because again, these do take in that ambient light and sort of amplify that. So if there is no ambient light, having an IR illuminator still allows you to see when it's dark because again, you have that IR that's casting and then it can sort of see with that. Um, so having this very powerful IR illuminator is pretty clutch. So it's actually got eight different settings for the IR illuminator and I'll show that um, kind of in like a video overlay. But um, yeah, it gets very, very bright. You can really kind of flood things out with that, with that IR illuminator. It does also have the ability to sort of focus the IR beam, um, which is pretty similar to other sort of like, a, for example, a, a PEC-15, which is like a mountable laser for my rifle that has its own IR illuminator, which you can kind of focus as well. But again, with this thing, it just like floods everything, especially with the zoom, like in combination with the zoom. So it does go up to a 20 times zoom um, with like half power increments. So you go 0.5 to one to 1.5 all at the click of this button. And yeah, the zoom was very, very handy. Uh, again, just kind of taking this out, you can take it out to a field as long as you have pretty good um, line of sight, like this zoom is going to help you out a lot. So as far as hunters are concerned, I think you guys are going to be able to appreciate this. Um, again, not necessarily going to have the same purpose as like, for example, a thermal wood, but at the price that you're getting this for, for night vision, to be able to spot, you know, whatever you're trying to look for uh, under that sort of cover of night, um, this thing will just, it, it will outperform a lot of the other systems I've seen, especially for the price point. And again, talking about that sort of spotting potential with this, it does have a visible laser. So you can see here, it's got a sort of cover on the bottom. And then you all, all you need to do is push the button and activate that laser. And this laser will go pretty far and still stay pretty, pretty crisp. So especially, you know, at nights when you're using a visible laser, it's gonna be um, pretty, pretty bright on this thing. But again, with that zoom and this laser, like if you're just trying to get some really pinpoint spotting, like this thing just has everything you would kind of need. It does also have a picture in picture function. So I'll sort of switch to a, def a different view of the actual display when I'm talking about all of this. So the button layout is pretty simple. So you have your power button, which will also be used for your, your laser range finder. You have your zoom, but also your up and down when you're in the menu. You have your okay again when you're in the menu. And then you also have the picture and record function there. You have your IR settings. So if you wanna switch it from day mode to night mode, you can use that. And then you can also use this to change the actual um, IR illumination levels. You have your picture in picture setting and then also your visible laser setting. And then you have your playback and, and menu. So going into the actual display so you guys can kind of see. So right now I'm in that day function. So if I want to go into my menu, I can click menu and then I have all my options. So again, you can sort of change what you want to record at. So with me, I'm still going to keep it at 4K, 30 frames a second. You have your still image quality, your picture in picture, your lens selection. So actually, let me change that back to 50. Um, you have your units, so you can do yard or meters. Uh, if you want to record for two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, you can select that as well. You got your auto record, LCD brightness. If you want to change the, the brightness up, your exposure. If you want the actual timestamp or the actual display stamp to be up, you can select that. For me, I'm going to keep that off. Your sound record, your date formats, clock settings, all pretty basic stuff. But again, pretty much everything you'd need um, to actually get this thing going if you want to do some recording. So if you're like me and you also want to keep the option open for just general like filmmaking, this thing has a lot of good options to allow you to get the picture that you're trying to get. And I'll show you the visible laser function as well as the, the picture in picture function. Picture in picture, um, it was kind of weird at first. I didn't really know the intended purpose, but kind of using it, again, it's just an easy way of finding a target 
or staying fixed on a target a little bit better, especially in combination um, or even you know in replacement of the actual visible laser. If you're using that visible laser, it allows you to spot things pretty easy. And if you're using that picture in picture, again, it just allows you to quickly blow up a certain you know part of the display to make sure you're staying on target if you are going to be using it for any sort of kind of surveillance or spotting or observation purposes. Now actually showing that laser range finder function, again, that works pretty well. I mean, I push it out pretty far, but I've also used it at closer ranges, which is nice, especially if you just wanna like have a laser range finder, if you just wanna take this to the range, it's pretty versatile. So if you wanna just you know map out um, certain increments that you wanna be shooting at or what have you, you do have this ability. Um, so it's good for closer distances, but also pretty good for reaching out and getting a good range estimation. So yeah, that laser range finder function um, works very well, very simple to use, um, and it's just pretty hard to mess up. So very nice in inclusion there. And then again, showing that zoom function, you do have those half measure increments. So you can go to that 0.5 out to that 20. Very quickly, again, you just have the buttons on top. It's very responsive. So if you do need to push out that magnification to that 20 times, it is, it's very simple and you can get there pretty quick. If you're, if you're trying to you know, blow up an image or try and find something or spot something a little bit further out, that zoom is very responsive and you can get there very quick, you know, spot and observe that for your buddy or you know, for yourself. Bro. You hit me in the nose. Dude. I was coming over to <laughs> hug you. You scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I need to ruin my shot. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> that is um pretty freaking bright. Now some other things to consider is it is backed by a two year warranty, which is just, it's nice when the company actually you know, is, is backing their product, especially for two years. That's, you know, it's just a nice thing, nice peace of mind when you're purchasing something like this. Um, again, it is, it's not as expensive as other night vision systems, but if you are dropping some money on it, you will want at least some peace of mind for the backing um, as far as just general defects and, and what have you. It is also IPX6 X6, uh, waterproof rating. So that's kind of like a code. So IPX6 um, ingress protection. X basically means they're not necessarily testing it for dust, but six is going to be that waterproof level, um, which 
at that level, this thing will be fine in pretty much any weather. You can take it into the rain. You can really take it under a waterfall. This thing will be fine. Um, you could probably submerge it a little bit, like total so soaking. Um, I wouldn't recommend it in general. Um, it's not necessarily that high of a rating. But again, as far as like rain, Pacific Northwest, if you guys live there, it's raining all the time. So you'll be fine taking this thing out into the rain. Um, in Georgia, when there's like torrential downpours, this thing will be fine as well. So again, it is nice to have that for that peace of mind. And this thing will be kind of able to withstand that, that crappy weather. But that is basically it. Again, definitely an impressive system. I will have some clips throughout the video so you guys can kind of um, have some frame of reference as far as like the audio quality, the night quality, the day quality, the zoom quality, the different IR functions uh, or the different IR illumination levels. Um, but yeah, for the price, this thing is, it's just, it's great, honestly. It's so many awesome features. And again, for me as a YouTuber, um, it's kind of hard to find cameras in general that have a night vision function. I do have one on my Sony Handycam, which was like a thousand dollar camera. Um, but again, having something like this that can record at pretty high quality, good frame rates and stuff. And again, just at night, it's nice to be able to have that um, because yeah, it just gives me a lot more opportunity to just go and record stuff when it's when it's dark. Otherwise, yeah, cameras, you can get some pretty, well, some very expensive cameras and they might be good at recording or taking some pictures at night. But having something with a night vision function, especially with an IR illuminator, just really kind of increases your, your options. Um, so for me, yeah, it's kind of nice. It's very, very versatile. But again, if you just need a system for like observation, surveillance, targeting, spotting purposes, or just, again, just general video recording purposes, this thing is a great freaking tool. And again, I was hesitant at first, especially it being my first digital night vision system. And again, especially for the price points, I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't have a whole lot of expectations, but again, for the build quality, the image clarity, the recording clarity, all the features as far as like the night vision, the day function, the IR illumination, all the settings, the focus. Um, yeah, this thing was just very, very impressive. So um, yeah, hopefully if you guys were considering getting something like this for whatever purposes, um, yeah, you guys can consider this, but I will put the link to the actual system down in the video description if you guys want to go and check it out. Um, but yeah, One Leaf, thanks for sending me this. Um, it was a lot of fun to test out. Um, again, it did surpass my expectations. I didn't really know what to expect, um, but for the price point, I didn't expect much and I got a lot, which was which is nice. So yeah, hopefully I can uh, put this thing to some pretty good use in some future videos. Um, and I think I can just in general, having again, a, another night vision camera, it's going to be uh, pretty freaking cool. It gives me a lot of options for stuff, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about this system. If you guys have anything that's comparable to this, let me know down in the comment section. If you guys have used digital night vision before, let me know how, how it was in your experience and also what usage you used it for. Cause there might be some uses that I'm completely missing out on or, or just not thinking about. Um, Cause again, I am, my experience with night vision is all sort of analog and using it in pretty much an offensive role. So yeah, it's kind of just the military infantry brain in me. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think, but that is it for this video. I'll see y'all in the next one.